Good evening. I'm here today on behalf of my son, Alan Dwayne Bluford, was murdered in the streets of Oakland on May the 6th by OPD. And we, we want justice for this. We, uh, we never could get our son back. We want justice for Alan Bluford. He didn't deserve to die. I wanted to stop, not just for our family, for all the males, for Oscar Grant's family, for Trayvon, for the numerous others that I don't even know their names. We need help, Oakland City Council. A lot of you would not have this job if it weren't for people in our community, in this family. We need you to stand up and have a voice for Alan Bluford. He wasn't doing anything wrong, but he's dead. And so please stand up and make a difference. Do it voluntarily or else we are here to make sure that we ride your tails until you do. My name is Alan Bluford. I'm the proud father of Alan Bluford, the young man that was murdered here. I'm here at the scene of my son murdered. Alan was on his way to graduate high school. Alan last report card we received a week before his death was two A's and two C's. He was preparing to walk across the stage. This is just a real tragedy. So here's the story. Okay, let's start off with what happened. Alan and his two friends were standing waiting for some friends to pick them up near 90th and Birch. The police officers, police officers, listen to what I say, were riding with their lights off. When he seen my son and his two friends, he was already preconceived that there was a gun or drugs involved through his, through his statement itself. Malso seen my son thinking that there, had this, there were suspicions or did something wrong. My son holding his pants on one side while he run furthered that thought. Initially, in the first two or three days, there were burglary suspects. Then after that, it looked like drugs or a weapon. And then, it's a weapon now. How is it possible that the officers could not distinguish between a gun or drugs? Uh, we are looking at every aspect of this case. I don't have the answer to that. It was racial profiling. It was more or less a stop and frisk tactic. Stop and frisk tactic that they use in New York. Let's come here to the Bay Area. Excuse me, they also said that Alan shot the police officer. The inspector came down, gave us his card, informed us that our son was in a, he, I'm quoting, gun battle, a gun battle with the police. We're like, not our son. This is not who we, no way. Oh, we know today. What do we know today? Today we know he never fired a firearm and the officer shot himself in the foot. What they say today is that Allen turned around and pointed a gun at the police officer. Uh, this gun was found uh, approximately 20 feet from Allen's body. Uh, right up this driveway here on the incline. His body was here. Uh, where he is pronounced dead at the scene here that night. Uh, the, the alleged gun was found at this location. The officer did what we trained him to do. It's ridiculous. 
violated. We will be looking at that very closely and we'll provide that information later on. Uh, I think that Howard Jordan really is a police officer to the heart. I mean, he backs his police officers no matter what. How many times, I don't, I don't understand this, have the, the review board recommended that an officer be removed? I know in my tenure has been done at least once. The epitome of what the the community, I think, don't like about the police is that they never did anything wrong in their life and they're always right. If we are here to answer questions from the community, You're here to it's very difficult it. to answer those questions if we're not being allowed to speak. There are people here that came here to ask questions and they want to know answers. Uh, they are not getting the answers that they deserve because you're very, being very disrespectful. Uh, I think Howard Jordan is leading the uh, OPD into receivership. <laughs> exactly what he's doing and he did a good job of that. Okay, um, this concludes our, our meeting. Uh, we want to thank you. I want to thank you for your cooperation. And uh, thank you very much. I would like to So this is a total charade. Like, this is meaningless. You guys answered like five questions that you feel like answering. And nobody. Nobody got nothing except you guys. Thank you. So we're here in Alan's room. Alan Dwayne Bluford. Um, this is where he lived the majority of his life. His room, I haven't done anything to it, changed anything around. It's just like he left. I did make the bed, but outside of that, everything else is just how he had it. He played football. He started out with Tracy Cougars. Well, he started out with Pop Warner at, um, in Oakland, playing for the East Bay Warriors. And he's the littlest guy, but he had a lot of heart. And there he is. Why was it considered necessary for a chase of Mr. Bluford? Exactly. The officers were investigating what they thought was drug and weapons violations. They had a reason to investigate that. Why do police officers always shoot to kill when the suspect is black? The officers are trained to shoot to incapacitate people when their lives are in danger or the lives of someone else is in danger. Are there independent civilian witnesses who have come forth verifying the fact that Mr. That Bluford pulled a gun. Yes, there are three independent witnesses to this incident. Who saw him with a gun? The officer and the three independent witnesses. There's his packet for graduation, and he never got to graduate, but we did accept his diploma. And I have that on the mantle downstairs. That's important. We couldn't get the coroner's report without a rally. So. It's been, it's been like pulling teeth with the city, getting any information. Uh, well, I got condolences from them, uh, and I don't know how heartfelt they were, actually. But uh, I haven't got any action from, uh, from none of my city leaders here in Oakland. We are seeking the truth. That's what we want. We don't want it six months from now. We were told yesterday that the police department has up to six months to file a report. We want the truth now. We deserve the truth now. Since the last time I was here, uh, things hasn't got any better for us as a family. Uh, actually, it has gotten a lot worse since we were able to get the Cornish report and find out that my son was on his back and stood over while he was murdered. Our city council is uh, 
don't want to rock the boat, seems like. They're really entrenched with the Oakland Police Department, starting with the president of the city council, Larry Reed, which attended my son's funeral and promised to uh, make sure this get thoroughly investigated. And uh, I don't know what he considers thoroughly is, but I haven't heard of him doing anything as of yet. We came here in May asking for help. You came to our service, Mr. Reed. You said you would help us. This officer came out and told lies from the beginning that my son shot him, and now we know he never shot him. And this officer is at home on disability on our tax dollars. What's wrong with this picture? And then we go to the coroner's office and they tell us we can't have our report. We still don't have a police report, Mr. Reed. I thought you were going to help me. We need somebody to tell us something. Did anybody talk to this guy who shot my nephew down dead? Did anybody question him? Did anybody, my nephew was, did anybody test that fool for drugs? He had to be crazy to shoot a young boy like that. My name is Janae Bluford. Alan was my baby brother. At the time he got killed, I was living on the East Coast going to school. I was planning on coming home to see him walk across the stage. Not to bury him. You guys run for office and promise to serve the city and do us the best that you can. I don't believe since May us having no answers is the best that you can do. We don't want money. We want him off the streets and we want the rest of them like him off the streets. Who think they have the right to just shoot people down? Can, can I just say something sure. to Adam real quick? Adam, the police chief is on his way and he's bringing a copy of the police report for you. All right. All right. All right. We're going to take a 10 minute recess. Thank you. Excuse me. Can we please? Uh, Yes, thanks for me. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. The president of the council and and the family are uh, talking. Okay, so I know that we're going to try to address those those concerns as much as we can. It's a it's part of that. It's a, a legal issue involved, but they are talking outside. So we're going to start. We can excuse me. Excuse me. Come on. We're going to. They are. We're moving on to item 4.2. 4.2 is a resolution declaring Oakland as an international city of peace in September 21st, 2012. As Oakland's International Day of Peace, we need an urgency finding to hear this item.
the fact that you have not allowed the galleries which you built to allow people to view the city council meetings is a direct violation of the Brown Act. This council has been aware of the death of Alan Dwayne Bluford since his death during the early morning hours of May 6, 2012. Chief Jordan has stated that his officers had reasonable suspicion to stop the teenagers because he thought he saw them pass drugs or a weapon between them. They were racially profiled, which means they were stopped simply because they were three African-American males. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds, but then your time is up. I will see that someone else is following. No, no. Come on, Adam. I'm Geraldine Bluford. I don't need the mic. I'm just going to say this. You all are here. City Council run the city. You see why there is a separation between the community and the city officials. It's because you will not let us have a word. And when I get up to speak and look at you in your eyes, you can see the pain in my eyes. My heart is broken. But you can put your head down and turn away from me and act like it don't matter. Alan is gone. He's not coming back. But he can't speak for himself. But I'm here to speak for him. And I want his report on his mother. That's my right to know what happened to my child. Right. And not to just look away and turn your head down. This could be your son, your cousin, your nephew. This is my baby, and do something about it. Do something, please you help us. No. You can make a call, and you can get to the bottom of it. Who doesn't want to know? You should want to know what happened to this young child in your community. In other cities where individuals were murdered by the police officers, they're, 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 so I, 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 I greatly appreciate. So, so there you this go. morning, so My son's last words here before he was murdered while laying on the ground was I didn't do anything. Why didn't do anything? Why did you shoot me? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Why did you shoot me? First thing Maso says, I swear he had a gun, I've been shot. Alleging that Allen shot him, which we found out that couldn't have been true because there's no residue nowhere on Allen uh, on his hands and no drugs and alcohol was found in Allen's body. Uh, what we believe once Maso shot himself, there was no stopping Maso from murdering my son. He talked about self-esteem. Um, I guess he was given, asked to give a definition, and it says self-esteem, feeling we, we have about ourselves. Number one, do something challenging each day. Number two, think positively. Number three, learn a skill. Number four, use cris criticism constructively. No one makes you feel inferior without your consent. And this is in his own words. And I just kind of feel like this is some of the last words that he has. I guess his class wrote letters of things and why they appreciate him. And one of them says, Dear Alan, I appreciate you because you are a very nice, kind friend to everyone. You are one of my best friends. I enjoy the time you spent helping me in class. Like in math and silent reading. I like to listen to you read to me and draw me pictures. You are great at sports and you try very hard.
to learn as much as you can in school. This makes you a smart student, your friend Haley. These are some of the, you know, just his classmates and things that they thought about him, which I agree. That makes me very proud of his character. Everyone just loves him. He was just such a kind-hearted person, so. can't get out of that path. Now what we're here to do is fight for justice for other families so they don't have to go through the things that we're going through. Blue first. Amen. Oh, yes. 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 Yes.